Okay, one of the most essential tools on your workbench uh, in retro repair is a multimeter. I have these two. This one is a Kai Wheats, which these these seem to be around and actually quite well regarded. Um, you see these quite a lot, and um, it's done all right. It it's it works well. Um, I have few complaints it just the only thing I don't like about it is it takes AAA batteries and there's no warning when the batteries are getting low so it takes two AAA's and it the only warning you get is um, some bad readings um, which I did in a video recently I was doing some diagnostics on um, on a ZX Spectrum on the coil and I was getting weird readings so that's that one this one I've had for a long time this was bought for me uh, as I think it was a uh, birthday present or a Christmas present from my best mate Jason um, and he bought one for himself and one for me and this is actually a really nice um, multimeter that's got some nice features to it it's, it's got an RS232 Port on it somewhere. I suppose that's actually. I don't know. I'm not sure how you attach the RS232 to it. But this has been around, kicking around in here for a long time and it doesn't work very well anymore. Um, but yeah, it does, it does frequency. But yeah, it's busted up and it doesn't. Um, Sometimes you go onto a, a setting and it doesn't take. I'm not even sure. The, I swapped the leads over, the leads are on the other one. So that's meant to be doing resistance now and it's not doing anything. It's frozen. And then you have to turn it off and turn it on again and it'll work. But it's just not reliable. It'd probably be alright if I, I. I have cleaned up the contacts in there, but it didn't take. So that one's going into retirement, but that was a lovely thing. So I did some hunting around on the internet last night and I found this. I'm not sponsored. This was not expensive. It's a DT132A Astro AI. That's not a whole heap of packaging, but that's actually fine. Um, oh, what have we got? Any, oh, no. Any ideas? We'd love to hear what you think of your new discovery, your feelings, blah, 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 blah. Tell us your feelings by writing a product review on Amazon. Nah, I do get quite a few emails from um, companies trying to give me multimeters. And I'm not interested, I don't want to be sponsored. Maybe one day. Maybe one day when I have a million subscribers. I think I'll last that long. I'm not liking the look of the leads to start with. Yeah, they're already in there. In sh in shipped with batteries in. Which is a risky move, bold risky move. You got to be sure that these cheapo batteries are not going to leak. Not a big fan of having to unscrew something to get the battery out. I'd rather it just like clipped in place, but then clips break and screws are a bit more reliable. Does this come off? I think it does. But maybe not. It's loose there. Oh no, it does. It's just got a like a tag that holds it in place. That's actually quite nice. Oh, I've got to take it off. I just missed to take things apart. I want to see it naked. Come on, come on. Yeah, that's pretty crap like that, doesn't it? <laughs> 
it feels cheap. It was not expensive. This I paid just over twenty pounds for it, but it had really good reviews. And you don't have to spend a lot on it. I don't need a fluke. I don't need um, an E B blog multimeter. I don't do precision electronics. I want to know if something's uh, got continuity, and I want a rough rough idea of how much resistance it holds. I want to know if something, if a diode is broken. Uh, I just need the basics. Oh, it's got a range select. Excellent. And that's actually handy because um, when you're testing resistance on a ZX Spectrum motherboard um, between ground and um, the power rails, the voltage rails, you some of them behave, the resistance can be um, uh, different depending on the range you've selected. So we've got voltage. Oh, I suppose we need a battery. Oh, is that AAA? It's on auto. So I'm just making sure you can see that. Oh. 1.634. This has got new batteries in it. One point six four four. That's a good battery. <laughs> anyway, that's what we're we on now. This is um, resistance. I've got all sorts in here. Um, brown, black, brown. Do it on here so I don't don't like these leads. Oh, it's cold in here, so they are going to be a bit stiff. But well, I'm going to say 100 ohms. Okay. Um, and select. Got continuity. Select again, we have diode check. We got a diode in. Some one in four one four eight. I prefer it to beep. I'd like a beep. Now, uh, what else have we got? Capacitance. Uh, so that's a one microfarad within spec. <coughs> Let's try a different one. This is an a hundred microfarad. Yeah, that's a really crappy cappy. Okay, temperature. I think that this is the. Oh, oh, that's not so good. There's no strain. Look, there's no. Let's take this out. That's just a piece of wire sticking out the end there. Um, there's no strain relief on these whatsoever. I'll take that out of there. And it's just that's just been screwed onto the end of that banana clamp thing. I might repurpose these for something else I have in mind. That does it in Fahrenheit as well. Uh, that's. I don't believe that's actually working. I think that's broken. It's not something I ever use. Not fast. Mm. 
That looks right. Disintegrate does not look right. Oh. Maybe that is what it thinks it is. It's not 15 in here. Well, I suppose it could be about 15. I don't know. What's the outside temperature? Because it's going to be a few degrees warmer than the outside temperature. Uh, the outside temperature is 12. So, yeah, a few degrees. That's right. <coughs> okay. And then we've got current. I never use current. It's not as good as I was hoping. It's all right. I will probably only use the um, voltage and resistance and continuity diode test. Anyway, it's all I've used on the other one. I have no reason to use uh, a frequency counter because I have an oscilloscope. So, yeah, doesn't get a recommendation. It's just going to be oh, oh the only the right so the main reason I bought this one was because apparently you can just see if I turn it off and turn it on again top right hand corner here comes up with a battery symbol apparently it gives you a battery warning that's the main, the main reason I bought it this one has a low battery warning but I've never seen it never seen it come on oh well I've got another one now to add to my collection. Um, I just wanted to show you something. Oops, go back in. Right, I just wanted to show you something with these leads. Uh, th these are not good. So it's on resistance at the moment. And um, if I touch them together, it should be as near as damn it dead short but it's jumping around all over the place and I, I can't work out why so that's where it should be that 0 0.02 ohms I'd expect something like that but why is it jumping around it might be because it's on auto that's no oh right if I hit range it turns auto off Well, that's much more like it. Okay, but what I did was um, I went back to these leads that I bought from Amazon separately. I quite like these ones because they've got nice long handles. And they're also interchangeable. I can put different ends on with crocodile clips and things. And they're fine. Um, but if I go back to the standard auto, I think that might be trying to read some sort of all right, so that's all right, that's working. But if I move it around, no, that's actually perfect. But then with these ones, I think they were reading some sort of capacitance or something like that. Let's try it again. Now look, this, this, they're horrible. Absolutely horrible. Why is it doing that? That's not gonna be any good to me. So they're going in the bin. They're terrible things. And these aren't great, but they're a lot better than those. Perfect. Okay. Uh, cheers, bye.